We'll begin our study of physical chemistry by uh, considering the various ways that pieces of matter can interact with one another. The study of chemistry itself is really a study of matter and energy. And our focus in this course is going to be on the energy part of this. So we're going to be really looking at what happens to energy uh, when different parts of matter, when different segments of matter interact with one another. Now in order to get a handle on that, we need to have a way of being able to specify the state of a system. And to do this, we use something called physical properties. Because these physical properties are going to be things that we can measure so that we understand what state a system is in, or what state our piece of matter is in uh, at any given time. And, uh, Basically, when we measure these physical properties, their values will tell us something about the system uh, that will help us understand uh, its current circumstances and when it changes, what those uh, changes mean. So some good examples of physical properties include things like volume, pressure, temperature, and amount. We could also add a few like mass and length, but I won't talk about those quite as much. I mention those first four because those can be used in quite uh, interesting and global ways to really describe a lot of physical systems involving molecules. So let's uh, tackle them one at a time. First, I want to specify what their units are. And it's going to be very important in this course for us to track the units of all of the things that we talk about. So for example, volume. Right? In the metric system, we usually give that the units of liters, which we abbreviate as liters. L. All right, but we could also use units like milliliters or cubic centimeters, which is the same thing. We could use cubic meters, which is bigger than that. Uh, but all of these things are basically ways that we can measure how much space does a piece of matter take up, how much space does a system take up. There are relationships between these. We know that one liter is equal to a thousand milliliters, which is also equal to a thousand mil. Uh, centimeters cubed. It's also, though, equal to 0 0.001 meters cubed. That's a useful conversion to know in some cases. What about pressure? Well, in general chemistry, we usually are introduced to pressure in units called something like atmospheres. And an atmosphere is defined as the amount of pressure the atmosphere exerts at sea level. And that's a perfectly good. It is used for many, many years. But when we start to uh, use the metric system, there's a better unit that we can use, and that's called bars. And bars are actually very close to atmospheres, um, but they are slightly different. So for example, one atmosphere is going to be equal to 1.01325 bars. So you can see that they're just about the same. They're almost equal, uh, but there's a little bit of difference between them. I'll also mention that one atmosphere, sometimes we use tor as a way of breaking that down, and one atmosphere is 760 tor, one bar is equal to 750 tor, roughly. It's not exact, but it's roughly 750 tor. What about temperature? Well, I think these we're all familiar with because we pay attention to the weather report every day, but in this case we're going to be using Kelvin almost exclusively in this course. It's an absolute temperature scale, which is set at zero when we're at absolute zero. But it's also uh, similar to a unit called degrees centigrade. In other words, one Kelvin difference in temperature is equal to one centi degree centigrade difference in temperature. However, temperature in Kelvin is equal to 273.15 plus the temperature in degrees centigrade. I want to ask you, though, please do not ever use degrees Fahrenheit in this course. That It is just not a very uh, good, useful scientific um, uh, measure for temperature, and uh, we're going to need something like Kelvin, actually, to uh, describe most of the relationships that we're doing. Now, N, I said, is an amount of matter, and we normally measure an amount in terms of the units of moles. All right, I'll remind you that one mole is equivalent to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules or particles. 
It, it's actually true that a mole is simply a definition of a number, just like a dozen means 12 or a pair means 2. A mole means 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. All right, so in that way, it's a useful number to know because it comes in handy when we're talking about systems of molecules, um, but it is just a number. All right, now let's move on and talk a little bit about energy and energy quantities. So I'll put that as a label on this page. When we're talking about energy, what are the units of energy? Well, we're used to different kinds of units of energy, but we're going to use the metric system. So in this case, our units are going to be equal to joules. And a joule is one kilogram meter squared per second squared in, in metric system units. Now, sometimes you will see in metric system the unit erg. One erg is equal to one gram centimeter squared per second squared, which means that 10 to the seventh ergs is equal to one joule. Well, we're going to be dealing with moles of molecules, and in that case, uh, the unit of joule is actually a little bit more appropriate. In fact, it's even more appropriate sometimes to use kilojoules, a thousand joules, as our units of energy. Now, energy is the capacity to do work. Now, what does that mean? Well, work is the displacement of something against an opposing force. So what this describes to us is that force um, is something that we need to distinguish from energy. In other words, force is not the same as energy. And in fact, force has units of newtons, and a newton is equal to a kilogram meter per second squared. So notice that it differs from joule by the factor of a meter. And in fact, one joule is equal to one newton meter. So force and energy cannot be the same because they do not have the same units. So they're not uh, quantitatively the same. And they, in fact, represent different things. Force is actually something that causes the path of an object, a moving object, to change. So it's something that causes an object to change its direction. All right, so now as we talk about energy in different kinds of molecular systems, what are we going to care about? Well, first we're going to care about defining what our system is. So I'm going to draw it here in a very abstract way. Our system is this box. And that can either be a physical container that separates our system physically from the rest of the universe, or it could simply be our definition of a particular piece of the universe that we can distinguish from other parts. So for example, all of the oxygen atoms, all the oxygen molecules in this room could be our system. And even though they're mixed with other parts of the universe, we understand that the identity is what distinguishes them as our system. Now, when we talk about energy, we're going to be interested in energy exchange. So in other words, if, if energy flows into a system, so there's a change in energy. I'm going to use this delta, the little triangle, to indicate changes. The energy in this case is going to be defined as positive. It's greater than zero because the system is gaining energy. We're always going to care about the system's energy when we talk about changes, which also means that if we have energy that is flowing out of a system, the change in energy is going to be defined as less than zero. All right, it's always going to be relative to system. Now, I'm going to test your memory a little bit. You may recall in general chemistry, you talked about chemical reactions. And if the reaction gave off energy, it was called exothermic. Well, that represents this sex second case. This is an exothermic example. The first case is an endothermic case, as it indicates that energy is flowing into the system. Energy is being added to the system as we go along. Now, one of the things that we're going to care about is how does energy exchange? So when the energy of the system is changing, it turns out that there are two interactions, two types of interactions, that are primarily um, involved in doing that. The first of these I'll call heat. Now, you may say, well, heat is just a form of energy. 
it has units of energy, but it's really an interaction. There is no, uh, there is no measure that says you contain a certain amount of heat. You contain a certain amount of energy, and if you happen to be hotter than something else, you may give off heat to that something else, but it's the exchange of energy that defines the heat. All right, this is an important distinction, and we're going to explore this more and more as we uh, go through. But heat basically implies that we have objects that are at different temperatures. And this is what causes heat to exchange energy with something else. The other way that we can exchange energy between a system and its surroundings is through something called work, another interaction term. Again, we're used to thinking of work in a very concrete way, but really all it is is an interaction between different parts of the universe that allow energy to be exchanged. Now, how would I define that? Well, it's basically everything, that is everything that exchanges, that isn't heat. That sounds like a cop-out uh, as a definition, but it turns out it, it actually is pretty good because heat covers a particular kind of energy exchange that involves things being at different temperatures. And while historically heat has been described as being some kind of flow between different objects, it turns out that this is not a very good way to think about heat. That in fact it's really a way that different uh, parts of the universe have of exchanging kinetic energy with one another. So this is uh, in part and parcel how we're going to have to define temperature. And so we might raise as a question, what is temperature? And instead of answering that in this video, I'm going to let that uh, wait for another time because that's an important question and one that we're going to want to have a much clearer answer to.